Right now at noon, a Democratic presidential hopeful has announced he will be making his way to the Badger State this week. And the head of the Department of Homeland Security resigns amid tensions of the surge of migrants at the border. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Monday. Hope you all had a good weekend. We'll get to those stories in a bit, but first let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast that this may be the nicest day so far this year. This is perhaps the warmest day so far this year. We've just got to beat 64. If we can beat 64, this will be the warmest day of 2018 or 2019 so far. I'm a year behind, but still plenty of sunshine out there. This is a live look from the station camera looking towards the west. Absolutely beautiful folks. There are some clouds across northern Wisconsin along with the chance showers that will not be impacting us here today beyond some cloud cover later on tonight. Guess what? We're at 64 right now. So if we warm one more degree, we will make it into the warmest day of 2018 so far. 67 in Lone Rock. Boscobel already at 69. So it's possible that they are really going to make it into the 70s today. Get this. Winds are coming out of the south and west. They're going to be picking up out of the south and west as we go through the day. When you have a strong southwest wind and then temperatures to the southwest that are already into the mid 70s, that's a good sign that you are really going to be warming up into the afternoon. So as we go through the next 12 hours, expect that 70 degree number to start popping up on temperature maps and with sunshine, go outside and enjoy that. Please enjoy it because not only will tomorrow be a little bit colder, but these are winter storm watches across parts of the high plains. And I'm going to be talking about how that system will impact us by the time we get you towards Wednesday. I don't yep. want to hear about it, but I guess we will. I don't think anyone does, but we've got to know. <laughs> All right, we do. We do. All right, Chris, see you in a few minutes. All right, sounds good. A man wanted in connection with a homicide in Illinois was arrested early Saturday morning in Dane County. Deputies with the Dane County Sheriff's Office arrested 37-year-old Eddie Menken of Chicago. Deputies say Menken was wanted in connection with a homicide that occurred in Spring Valley, Illinois. He was taken into custody during a traffic stop at the Edgerton Oasis in the town of Albion. The Wisconsin State Patrol assisted in the arrest. Police in Batavia, Illinois, spent part of this morning investigating reports of a man with a rifle entering the city's high school. Batavia is a western suburb of Chicago. The city sent out a tweet this morning shortly after 7 asking residents to stay away from the high school until further notice. Almost two hours later, the city sent another tweet saying no gunman was found and no one was hurt. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders plans to hold rallies in battleground states this weekend, including a rally in Madison Friday night. He'll also make stops in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Ohio. Sanders won the Wisconsin primary in 2016. Wisconsin is seen as a toss-up state and has been an early focus for Democratic presidential candidates. Beto O'Rourke campaigned in the state last month during the first week of his candidacy. Kirsten Nielsen is out as Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. It's part of a massive overhaul of the DHS that's being engineered and directed by Stephen Miller, one of President's advisors and a hardliner on immigration. Nielsen's departure comes during a surge of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border, many of them families and children. In February alone, more than 76,000 people were arrested or turned away at the southern border. That amounts to nearly two people a minute. The president is understandably frustrated with the increasing numbers, but firing Nielsen isn't going to change that. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Kevin McAleon now takes over as the acting head of DHS. More than three quarters of Americans are at least somewhat concerned that they will not have enough money for retirement. But there are some easy ways for you to maximize your savings. In 2019, people are receiving a 2.8% increase in their Social Security benefits. That's the first increase since 2012 as we try to catch up with inflation. But you should not be relying on that Social Security check alone. Local financial expert Mark Farnan says you should be putting at least 10 to 15% of your take-home pay into savings. The Roth IRA money has already been taxed. You'll put the money into the account and it will grow tax-free because there'll be no taxes due on it each year as it grows. And then when you go to take the money out, uh, it will also be tax-free. Now, as far as when you can retire, Farnan says it's a matter of timing. You are eligible at 62 to take Social Security benefits if you need to or want to, but you can take them all the way up to, you can go all the way up to 70 without taking them. The longer you wait, the more benefits are going to be. 
Well, five days after being taken hostage at gunpoint in Uganda, freed American tourist Kimberly Sue Endicott started her journey home. Security forces found Endicott and her tour guide Sunday across the border in the volatile Democratic Republic of Congo. Four armed gunmen attacked the pair last week while on safari in Queen Elizabeth National Park. The kidnappers demanded half a million dollars in ransom and sources tell CBS News at least some of the money was paid. The abductors managed to escape after the rescue and Ugandan forces are still searching for them. Well, NCAA women's basketball has a new champion. Baylor recovered after blowing a 17-point lead and losing a star player beating Notre Dame 82-81 to for the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship last night. The Lady Bears won their first championship in seven years. Baylor was able to pull off the win without star forward Lauren Cox, who injured her knee late in the third quarter. And with Baylor clinching the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship, Madison Chocolate Shop will be giving out free single scoops of old-fashioned vanilla ice cream today. The company assigns each participant an ice cream flavor. Since Baylor won, it's giving out old-fashioned vanilla scoops. But if Notre Dame had won, the shop would have been giving out Zanzibar chocolate. The free scoop will be available all day today at Madison Area Chocolate Shop locations. And the men will take to the court tonight to find out who is the champion. The number one seeded Virginia Cavaliers and the number three seeded Texas Red Tech Ra Raiders will face each other tonight in Minneapolis. Tip off 8.20 p.m. You can see it right here on CBS. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. One dish with so many uses. Sounds like a dream come true, doesn't it? Well, just wait until you see how easy it is to go from ho-hum to yum-yum. Here in the test kitchen, we love when we can make a dish that, well, let's just say, can wear a bunch of hats. And the corn and black bean salsa that we're making today does just that. Since it's easy to throw together and lasts for a bit in the fridge, it's the perfect dish to keep on hand.
Let me show you what I mean. We start by combining a can of drained black beans with thawed frozen corn, some chopped red bell pepper, a good amount of cilantro, and a few sliced scallions. Then, to make the dressing that brings this combo to life, we add some balsamic vinegar to a bit of lime juice, along with some vegetable oil, cumin, and a bit of salt. Once this is whisked together, we pour it over our black bean mixture and pop it in the fridge to chill for a bit. The nice thing about this is that you can enjoy it as a colorful, good for you side dish or spoon it over grilled chicken or fish to turn a ho-hum dinner into one that is yum yum. To get the recipe for what we call our save the day black bean salsa, all you have to do is check out our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen where today we found a fun and fresh tasting way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. There's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. I'm next, a warm April day across southern Wisconsin, but we could see a cool down, maybe even some uh, snow. Meteorologist Chris Reese has your first alert forecast when we come back. Our Call for Action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues. You can call our hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials down 132 points. The NASDAQ losing 14. And the S&P 500 down 6. Q106 Farm Dr. Pam Yankee out of the radio barn today. So here are your farm numbers.
And Chris is here now with good looking day today. But That's right. <laughs> well, let's hold on to good news first, because today, my friends, is April 8th. And April 8th is the day that we typically see our first 70 degree weather day here in Madison, Wisconsin. And I guess Mother Nature got wind of that because today's weather could not come on a better day. First of all, it's a Monday and things are absolutely fantastic outside. 64 in Madison right now. Boscobel already at 69 degrees. We are truly going to see that warmth, folks. Temperatures a lot warmer across the West than just 20 four hours ago and winds are starting to work their way out of the south and west in time. In fact, coming out of the south and west at seven miles per hour here in Madison, they're a little bit stronger as you work your way across parts of northeastern Iowa. So watch how our winds begin to change going throughout the day. This is the afternoon. We are talking a strong southwest wind sustained at 21 miles per hour, tapping into temperatures that are going to be warmer. That's really going to help warm up those temperatures. We are talking highs in the low 70s today. Some some folks will likely even exceed that 70 degree mark, making this the warmest day of 2019 so far. It will cool down things though tonight falling back down towards 42 into tomorrow. A little cold front comes on through, so we're going to see a northwesterly wind for your Tuesday afternoon. Highs are actually going to struggle to get out of the 50s, so it's going to be a good 10 to 15 degrees colder tomorrow, which is why I want to make sure that you enjoy today. Then as we head into Wednesday, clouds increase and uh oh yeah we begin to see that let's go ahead and focus on that i know rumor has been around the block folks have been talking about it here's how things are shaping up right now we've got a storm system coming into the pacific northwest right now driven by a powerful jet stream over the pacific ocean a region of low pressure coming into california will then track throughout the rockies begin to strengthen and then work its way towards the great lakes that my friends is why we are going to see a perhaps very powerful system impacting the high plains in the upper Midwest. Here it is. You see those winds starting to pick up as we head into Wednesday. We could see at least on the leading edge of this some snow, but then eventually we'll go over towards all rain here while that snow likely lingers towards the north. And then there's another system behind that one that might take more of a southerly track. We'll watch that one, but we've got to get through the first system first. The good news is the heaviest snow does look to be to our north right now. We still have a couple days to iron out the track, but this is a little closer view by Wednesday afternoon into Thursday with that snow coming in. And then, like I mentioned, going over towards all rain. And here's the deal. It is April. That is not too shocking around here, but some of these models are coming in with some pretty hefty numbers for the snow, especially for areas north of Madison. That was the European, the GFS model coming coming in in a similar kind of theme. I do think those are a little bit overdone right now. We have a warm ground, but that's something to keep an eye on simply because the system is locked and loaded with plenty of moisture. So those temperatures are going to be very important just to see how much of what we get. But again, this is not the first time on this same date back in 1973. There is a massive blizzard across parts of the upper Midwest. Madison got 13 inches of snow. I don't think we're going to be seeing this type of a system, but this type of a system will be very close to us. And that is why I want to pay attention to the forecast as we go through the next couple of days. And then, of course, last April was just a mess. We all remember that one. Plenty of snowstorms that came our way last April. Again, right now, this just looks like a chance for snow. Temperatures are going to be mainly above freezing, but precipitation is going to be heavy. That is the problem. And then we gradually warm things back up beyond that. But I know all eyes after today are focusing on what happens on Wednesday, and we'll keep you guys up to date. It's going to be a very challenging forecast, honestly. All right. All right. Thank you, Chris. Linda Birch from the Bruce Company is here to answer your plant and garden questions. The number to call 608-270-9933. We'll get to your calls right after this.
Linda Bartram, the Bruce Company is here taking your calls at 270-9933. Spring has sprung, apparently. There are lots of beautiful flowers. Just when you're buying them, be careful of which ones you start to put outside because if you have sandy soils, we have, we have onion sets and potatoes and all different kinds of things that are available for sale. But judge by your soil because we've got some cooler weather coming, <laughs> as, as Chris said, and the plants are the same thing. Like the geranium cannot go outside yet, the Gerber daisy should not, but pansies could go outside. In Alyssum, I brought a number of, of things that, that uh, well, even the coal crops could be planted if the soil is warm enough where, where you are living. And a little snow maybe, so mm -hmm. yeah, hold, hold, hold on, on. hold on. <laughs> All right, we'll get to the phones now. We'll start with Janelle from Blanchardville. Hi, Janelle. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. My question is, the temperatures are still kind of cool in the evenings, but can I use Roundup now on the grass and maybe also the Creeping Charlie? Okay, are you trying to kill that grass? Yes. All right, all right, <laughs> because Roundup is a, is a contact killer. It's going to kill anything. It's not a selective um, killer. But, so the Creeping Charlie, I would say that today would be a good time, and it's going to be warm enough tomorrow. Above 50 degrees is good, but we're going to have another cold snap. So if you wait till later in the week, you're going to miss that, that window. But it has to be above 50. Yes. Okay. All right, Sue from Verona is not there anymore. Let's go to Caroline from Fitchburg. Hi, Caroline. Hi. Hi, Hi what's your question? Uh, I have arborvitaes and pine trees, and they're probably 8 to 10 feet tall. And I'm noticing as I'm working around the base, the roots are showing a lot on them, like they're searching for dirt and there's none there. What do I do? Well, I like to put around plants that I, that I really love a nice wood mulch, something that's okay. going to be organic and will break down and will help to actually turn into a, a nice organic matter for those roots to explore. So okay. that's I don't need to protect them. I don't need to put more dirt down first? You would not necessarily have to put dirt down Just first. Just put some mulch no. down. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All Very right. Good. Thanks for calling. Thank all right, here's Betty from Beloit. Hi, Betty. Yes, I have a peace lily that is dying out on me. The tips are dying. The old foliage is the tips are dying. And when the new stuff starts to come up, those tips are dying. What can I do to stop this? Well, I would check the soil and see whether you have any white residue on the top. Many times that, that can be a salt buildup in that container of soil so you could flush through with with water not softened water to use something that, that is rainwater would be ideal also you try to get rid of the salt profile and that should improve the older leaves it's not going to help but the new growth would yeah, help the new that. growth would be better all right Sharon in Fitchburg hi Sharon yeah hello hello hi go ahead Sharon is this not uh, Sharon yes it is what's your question uh, yes, I am wondering if it's too early to start planting seeds for the garden to plant in the garden, um, hopefully by Mother's Day. Well, yes, I'm glad that you're aware of the Mother's Day that we, we can have frost up until that time. As far as seeds, a lot of people are starting seeds inside their homes, tomatoes and things, that then you will move out after the temperatures are warmer. But it's, Mother's Day is usually a good barometer for putting stuff outside. That's good for tomatoes and things. There are certain seeds that can go out earlier than that, but seeds, not plants. All right, let's go to Betty in Wanakee. Hi, Betty. Hello. Hi, go ahead. I had a fungus in my vegetable garden last year, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I didn't get any uh, tomatoes or green beans. Oh. And I'm wondering if there's something I should do this spring to amend the dirt okay. to get produce. If, if it's possible, I would move those tomatoes to a different location. Don't even replant them in the same spot in your garden. It's best to rotate crops like that. And last year we were so wet and cool that that probably led to a lot of the issues. But rather than amending the soil, I would just move it to a new location. All right, we're out of time. If you're on the line, stay there. Linda will talk to you off the air. See you next time. Good to see you. Chris has one final check of our forecast. Yeah, that's right. We're still seeing plenty of sunshine out there today. Highs by this afternoon will work their way towards 70 degrees, staying breezy and mild as well. I think that's going to be fantastic for a lot of folks. As we work our way through the next 7 to 10 days, we do have a little bit of unsettled weather by Wednesday. All right, keep an eye on that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.